What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's video and I hope you guys are as well because we're gonna be doing a complete comprehensive tomato care guide. This is gonna be walking you guys through every single thing that we do to our tomatoes because we do get asked all the time, Luke, how do you do it? What do you do? How do you do it? Can you walk us through the steps that you, that you take every single year to get your tomato plants looking so amazing? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna walk you through spacing, plant selection, fertilizing, just miscellaneous care tips and tricks that are gonna help your plants stay healthier and produce more. We're gonna go through it all. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a jam-packed episode. I cannot wait, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is tomato selection. You have determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes are uh, basically a tomato plant that are determined for size, yield, things like that. You do not want a determinate tomato because we grow in a method called single stemming. Single stemming means that we take off all these side growths, which I'll show you up close in a second, and those side growths inevitably will produce a whole other plant, essentially. Those will produce more lateral growth, and those will also flower, and it becomes more of a bush. You don't want a bush because it restricts airflow, and it also does not grow upright. It does not promote that upward growth. It promotes more of a outward bushing growth. So to prevent that outward bushing growth, we come in here and we prune off all the side shoots, keeping it to just a single stem, which is where it gets its name, single stemming. And then what that allows us to do is it allows us to support up a single stake, which we'll get into that in a little bit as well. But that single stake allows us to grow a lot of plants in a small area, which also kind of ties into how we grow, which is high intensity. High intensity is basically relative to how many plants you can fit in a certain space. Um, every plant is different with spacing. You know, tomatoes are a lot different than lettuce, a lot different than garlic, but in this space here, we're essentially getting the maximum amount of tomato plants that you could possibly get without causing stress. This allows you to grow far more food in far less space. It's a really great method, but it's important you go with an indeterminate tomato so that it can, uh, so that it can be grown like that because an indeterminate tomato will grow all season long. A determinate tomato will stop after a certain time because it's all determined. It's you know, determined how high it gets, how much fruit it gives out. So once that's done, it stops growing or it stops producing. An indeterminate tomato will produce all season long. And since we're using eight foot tall stakes, you want a nice long season so you can get a nice long harvest. Just makes more sense that way. So an indeterminate tomato is the first thing you want. The next thing we do is fertilize. This is a very important step to making sure your plants stay healthy and produce all season long. When you're growing in a high intensity setting, you have a lot of plants in a small area. This means your soil has to be very fertile. So we use Trifecta Plus to make sure that the soil is as healthy and as fertile as it can be. It also makes sure that it feeds all season long. So we have a lot, uh, we have a lot of nitrogen that we get in the beginning that gives us our nice green growth that helps speed up the growth, helps get the plant established. And then it also has a slow release phosphorus, which gives your plant the flowers and the fruit production that you really need. It also has a high amount of potassium, which helps with fruit set. It also has a lot of calcium, which helps with blossom end rot. That's why we use Trifecta Plus on, well, we really use it on everything, but we really love it for tomatoes because you're going to see the best, uh, you know, the best results when using it. So that's what we use. But again, just make sure you're using an all-purpose fertilizer, at least something that's really well balanced, something that's going to give your plants not just nitrogen, but also phosphorus and potassium. That way you have a really well-rounded plant. You're gonna to wanna to fertilize heavily in the beginning, right when you plant. And then as soon as you start seeing some fruit and flower production, it's smart to go back a second time and just give them a little bit of a top dress. We'll sometimes go through and we'll give them two or three tablespoons after we start to see some flowers and fruit just to make sure they have enough fertilizer to keep going all season long. The next thing that I wanna talk about is pruning. This is what we get into when we start talking about single stemming. This is very, very important if you wanna grow just like how we grow, and that's because we take off all the lateral side growth. A lateral side growth can be seen in the armpit of each tomato. So coming in close so you can check this out, because this is very important in identifying what you wanna pull off and what you wanna keep, because you wanna essentially keep it to just one main stem. Everything else can go. Right here is a tomato plant that's got a lot going on. It looks absolutely beautiful, don't get me wrong, but it's got a lot of side growth. This is because we let this one kind of go rogue for this example here. You can see there's this stem that looks like a tomato plant. There's this stem that looks like a tomato plant. There's this stem that looks like it's got a tomato plant. There's this stem that looks like a tomato plant. 
this stem that looks like a tomato plant, and so on and so forth. There's probably 10 or 15 suckers on this plant. And what you don't want is you don't want all of them because if you leave all of these, these will all produce whole plants. That's why these all look like their own plant because if I take it down to the base, you'll see they're all coming from one main stem. One main stem is producing all of these. So why is that? Well, tomato plants produce what's called suckers. These suckers are pretty easily pulled off, but they look like whole tomato plants. That's because they are. These will fruit and flower just like a regular tomato plant. But you can see if the, all of those grow, not only is energy being divided up between all those plants, but also airflow is being really restricted. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in and pull all of those off. Before we start pulling off stuff willy-nilly though, I'm experienced, I've done this before, so I know what I'm doing, but you wanna be able to find what is the main stem. And how we do that is we start at the base, we start at the base of the plant, peel everything back, and you're gonna see this main stem going up. Follow that main stem going up, all the way up, it's gonna keep going all the way up, and it normally has flowers on it already. All of this new growth, all of these suckers here, they can be snapped off pretty easily with a twist on both sides. And if they're not mature enough, you'll see they don't have any flowers on them. If they have flowers on them, it's really time to get them, to get them gone. But generally, they won't have any flowers on them because the main growing stem is typically the thing that will be the first to fruit. So you're gonna have flowers here, flowers here, and since there's no flowers anywhere else, that's pretty much your main stem. It's also the most straight growth. Um, a lot of times suckers will come out on a 45 degree angle and start growing outwards. The main growing stem will be pretty much a straight line from the top to the bottom. That's also how you pick your main growing stem because obviously you wanna grow it straight up a pole so you don't want something growing on a you know, 45 degree angle. So pick your main growing stem and then just start pruning off from there. Usually, like I said, these suckers pop off pretty easily but if you get some stubborn ones, having a pair of hand pruners helps because you don't wanna do damage to the tomato plant. Come in here and pull those off. And as you can see, we're really getting to more of a single stem now. Then what I wanna do, I got one more down here. There we go. Then what you wanna do is you wanna prune off this lower foliage. This is also very important because you'll see here, this stuff is starting to curl and it's got a lot of dirt on it. See all that dirt? That dirt, well, soil, I guess is the proper term. It's got soil on it. That soil has soil-borne funguses like blight. Blight is a fungus that will land on the leaves and colonize the surface of the leaves, causing those blotches that you see those yellow spots and eventually it's going to kill the plant. So what we wanna do is we wanna remove all those leaves and prune the plant up. This is going to make sure there's lots of good airflow around the base of the plant. And it's also going to ensure that the soil can't splash up on the leaves. So we're gonna prune it all the way up to the very first flower. This seems really drastic. This seems really drastic, but it's important if you wanna keep the leaves off of the soil. So here's our first flower. Here's the last leaf node that comes out and we're good. So we pruned up about a foot and a half, almost two feet of plant, but we're left with this plant up top here that's gonna continue growing and that's going to ensure that the plant is off the ground, has really good airflow, and that's going to keep it disease free almost all season long. And if you're worried about wasting these suckers, don't worry, they actually will grow all new plants. All you have to do is make sure you take off the bottom couple leaves, stick them in some soil, and they'll actually root and produce all new plants. So if you wanna give some away to friends or sell them at a farmer's market, no one will even know the difference. Just make sure they're properly rooted and you'll be fine. I like to keep, if I'm going to keep some on hand, I like to keep a little vase of water so that way they can keep nice and perky and they don't uh, wilt in the, in the hot sun. I just like to keep them in a vase of water so they stay hydrated and then I'll move them over to their containers where they can grow. And these will be ready to root in about five to seven days. They root pretty quick. But in our case, we have so many that those are actually gonna go to the compost pile. All right, so now let's talk about staking. That's the next most important thing because now that we got the tomato pruned up, it's ready to stake it up. So these are the stakes we use. These are eight foot furring strips. Now it might seem kind of crazy to stick an eight foot tall pole in the ground next to a two foot tall tomato plant. But remember, you're not staking this tomato plant at two feet tall forever. You're staking it up to eight feet tall. This tomato plant is gonna grow for you for the whole season. So you wanna prepare for that. 
it's definitely not uncommon for us to actually have to top the tomato plants because they get too tall. We've had 10 foot tall tomato plants without even trying before. And it's absolutely amazing the amount of tomatoes you get. So you wanna make sure you have a nice firm foundation to stake them on. These are dimensionally one inch by two inches. They're very inexpensive as well, which is why I love them. Furring strips are around $1.50 at our local hardware store. So they're not gonna cost you arm and a leg. They're really structurally sound. We've used the same furring strips for about three or four years now. And sure, the bottoms rot a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's a really an expensive option. How we connect the tomato plant to the furring strip is with stretchy elastic twine. This stretchy elastic twine is made by a company called Cloud City. I'll have links to them in the description box below, but it's by far the best method to tying up your tomato plants that you could possibly find. We absolutely love this stuff. and We've been using it now for three years, and truthfully, we have no reason to go with anything else. This stuff stretches, so it's easy to cut, but it also does not cut into your tomato plant. That's one thing you don't want. If you don't have something that's not stretchy and elastic, it won't grow with the tomato plant, so it'll constrict the stem. If it constricts the stem, it'll crimp it and it can fall over, or it can cut off circulation entirely, and then it can cause the plant to die. So you don't wanna do that. But also, it's stretchy, so it actually moves with the wind. When the wind blows your tomato plants, you want the tomato plant to be able to sway. If it sways, nothing's going to happen. If it can't sway, what's going to happen is the material is actually going to cut into the tomato plant. Because if it's not swaying, that pressure from the wind is pushing on the stem, and it will actually start sawing into the stem, ending up cutting it, um, severing it or making it crimp and fall over. You don't want to do that. So that's why this stuff is very, very inexpensive and it's very amazing to have with your tomato plants. The actual intent for this stuff is for like waistband material, but you get 300 yards of it for like eight to $10. It's really inexpensive, really amazing stuff. And uh, like I said, I'll have a, a link in the description box below to this. Now, there's a lot of other things you can use. You can use pantyhose material, you can use stretchy tomato tape, but at the end of the day, this video is about what we do. And we've been doing this now for three years and simply cannot find a better way to do it. So like I said, there'll be links in the description box below. You'll thank me later. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the steak and we're gonna simply stick it in the ground. You guys always ask me, Luke, what do you do to prepare the steak to go in the ground? And the answer is nothing. I literally just got these from the hardware store right now. I just picked them up and uh, they're ready to go in the ground. I leave them blunt like this. You can cut them on an angle, but I don't like to lose any length off these. So I just keep them all blunt like that and I just push them into the ground. You guys always ask, how do you secure them into the ground? Well, I just push them in. I don't do anything special. I just push them in and I let the weight of the tomato plant secure the, basically be the anchor. The tomato plant has a root system which is anchored into the ground. All it needs is a support stake to go up it. So the tomato, you'd expect the, the, the post to be swaying all over the place and it really doesn't. And that's because the tomato plant for the most part is pretty strong. It just needs direction to go. And since this post is straight, it keeps your tomato plant growing straight. And since the root system is so established on your tomato plants, it keeps pretty much right where it's at. It doesn't move around that much. So just push it into the ground eight inches, 10 inches. I prefer close to 12 inches if I can, if the ground's really soft. But if you can't get it that far, just make sure it's like eight inches and you'll be fine. So we're gonna go over here to this tomato plant. And it's really important how we do this, that you put it on the inside of the tomato plant. This is the outside, the outside of the bed. It's on the outside of the tomato plant. It just makes it a lot easier to maintain, tie up, and, uh, and work with if you put the post on the inside of the tomato plant. Now we don't, put the we don't put the tomato plant so close to the post that when we push this in, it risks damaging roots. You wanna make sure that the post is about four or six inches further than the tomato plant is. Because you wanna make sure that if, if you are gonna cut some roots, you wanna make sure you cut just some small fibrous roots. You don't wanna cut the main root system of the tomato plant because that's gonna cause some stress. So all we're going to do, stick it here about four to six inches away from the plant make sure it's nice and straight up in the air. And simply, I just put my body weight on and let it sink in the ground. And sometimes you gotta push on a little bit, but at the end of the day, it sinks in. It's sinking in. If you can get up on a ladder and hit it with a hammer, it's obviously gonna be far more efficient. But at the end of the day, this is what we do. <laughs> so there you go. Now that you got the stake in the ground, it's not in there very far, it's about eight inches, uh, so it's not that bad. All we're going to do is tie it up now. So all we're going to do is we're gonna take our elastic band here, we're gonna pull out about uh, eight, 10, 12 inches or so, it doesn't really matter. Just something you have enough 
to tie around the plant securely without really having to stretch it nice and hard there. Take the tomato plant, stick it right up along the post here. And remember, you put the post a little bit further away from, from the plant. So it's natural that the plant won't be touching the post the whole way. But once you get about a foot off the ground, the tomato plant should be up right firm to the post. This is going to make sure that your plant grows exactly the way that you want it. I just tie two knots and we're good to go. I'll cut it again, come up here. And I like to make sure that I secure it about every foot. I'll put a, a new string. This is because after a while, if you let the plant go without any support, it will fall over and you don't wanna do that. So I just like to make sure that I keep it nice and secured and that's fine. You'll see here how it, it actually can sway with the wind here. It's not restricting the stem and it's good to go. And at the end of the day, this is what your tomato plants should look like. They're growing single stem up a stake, tied up with elastic twine, two feet apart with a nice organic all-purpose fertilizer. This is what we do to make sure that our plants are super healthy and produce tomatoes for us all year long. Now, I know you're gonna be asking yourself, Luke, my tomato plants are already looking super raggedy. I haven't pruned them. They're all over the place. What can I do? Still try it. Still try single stemming them. Find that main growth stem, uh, pull off all those suckers, trim them off with, with pruners if you have to, but get it to a single stem. Prune off those lower leaves so you have good airflow, and I promise you the results will be far better than anything you could ever imagine. Not only that, but it will also taste better. It's been, it's been proven time and time again that tomatoes will actually create sugars that they, can, uh, that they generate from the sun. So if your tomatoes can have access to sunlight and they're not being blocked by all that bushy foliage, your tomatoes are actually gonna be sweeter. That's how you get sweet, flavorful tomatoes, is by having tomatoes that can touch the sun. So by having a really bushy plant, it looks beautiful, and you might have a few more tomatoes at the end of the year, but you're gonna have larger and sweeter tomatoes by growing them this way. You're also going to probably get more tomatoes growing this way because you can fit more plants in a given space. So at the end of the day, that's why this method is one we've stuck with and continue to grow with to this very day. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you guys have any other questions or comments, post them in the comments box below. And if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do that. It'd be a great idea because we've got lots more content coming out. So, all right, I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the Emma Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya.